Hello everyone. Welcome to the world of chess. This is Sivaram. I am a chess player from Chennai, India. In this video, I am going to give tools which will help a beginner chess player to understand, learn and navigate through the game of chess. And this video mainly consists of around uh, four parts uh, explaining about the chess board, the pieces and the special moves like in person castle castling the piece movement the piece interaction and uh, the three phases of the game or the three stages of the game that is the opening middle game and the end game and also a bonus uh, study plan or a starting guide to get started with yeah so without any further ado let's get into the video chess board is a 8 cross 8 square board consisting of a total of 64 squares and the chess board is made up of uh, rows called as ranks and the columns called as files and uh, this is the first rank second rank third rank fourth rank and so on similarly there are a file b file C file, D file, and so on, till H file. So why is there all this? Okay, as you can see, there are uh, A, B, C, D, etc. And 1, 2, 3, etc. is written in the board. So this is a board with coordinates. So each square has a name. For example, <coughs> this square is D3 because we take the name of the file first and the rank. So this is a D3 square. And let's say this. This is D5. D and 5. Simple, right? Let's say this is a square. This is G4. That's G, the name of the file, and the name of the rank. 4. Pretty simple. Okay. Each player has 16 pieces. Okay, there are eight pawns. As you can see, these are tiny little pawns. And you have a king, a queen, two rooks, a pair of knights, and a pair of bishops. Clear, right? Yeah. The basic arrangement of the chessboard is something like this if you don't have a coordinate system like uh, which is present over here like the ABC the name of the files and the ranks how you can identify is you the right right hand corner of the chessboard should be a light square as you can see there are light squares light colored squares and there are dark squares like this so the right hand corner square should be a light square so that's how you set up your pieces so usually the rooks uh, go in the a the corners of the board like the a1 and the h1 and the a8 and the h8 for the black pieces okay and then there are then comes the knights on b1 and g1 squares respectively and then comes the bishops then there will be queen on d1 and the king on e1 a simple way to remember uh, the placement of the king and queen because you shouldn't uh, be interchanging the places of the king and the queen, then the game would uh, the game would not be that good. So uh, how you will remember that is the white queen stands on a white square or a light square. Similarly, a black queen will be on a dark square. That's how you will place it. Or you can even remember like this: king will. Uh, be standing on an e file and the queen will be on the d file so e for king and uh, d for queen yeah we in the school we used to study e for elephant or something but here you just uh, remember like e for king and uh, d for queen so that's an easy way to remember so that's the basic arrangement of the pieces okay now let's start with how the pieces actually move Okay. Usually at the start of the game, white is used to 
move the pieces first white makes a move and then black will make a move in return so they will continue making their moves so as we can see these are the pawns these have a value of one that is the power or the worth of the material is one so a pawn values one points okay yes now it's the beginning of the game now white has to make a move and uh, white has a uh, many choices to do in this position but how the pawns move is the pawns usually move two squares in the first move only and in the next moves it will uh, only move for only one square not more than that it can also move for a well, for only one square in the first move also it's our choice to make it move one square forward or two squares forward and a pawn will never move backwards for example i want two steps forward to e4 let's say my opponent made a move e6 okay now you cannot move this pawn backwards pawns never go backwards they're like uh, brave soldiers who will uh, never return uh, from a back a battlefield or they will not withdraw from the battlefield or run away from the battlefield so you can remember like that so the pawns never move backwards and they capture diagonally they capture diagonally they cannot move sideways or they cannot capture in front okay for example is my opponent played this move e5 instead you cannot just capture because it doesn't work like that you cannot capture the pawn uh, pawns don't capture forward they capture diagonally so in case my opponent played d5 in this position as it is in a diagonal square from my pawn my pawn can capture so the pawn can capture one square diagonally so it's simple right you understand it okay let's move to knights the special thing about knights is they move a uh, very different from the other pieces and they can also jump over the pieces they can hop over the pieces but other pieces cannot for example a rook a bishop cannot hop over the other pieces let me show you one position let's say you are in this position i hope you are playing white uh, because yeah white has a lot of pieces and a lot of material advantage in this position you can see there is a knight on this square f3 how the knight moves is it moves in a shape of the l okay what is that okay i will show you this knight can move one square up and two square to the sides or two squares up and one square there so you can see this l right it could be any way can even go this way see sorry about that yeah and the knight can also go to the d4 square so this is how a knight moves the knight to e5 from this position or the knight can go here the knight can also go backwards all the pieces can go backwards except the pawn i can go to d2 g1 and all the other squares so these are the possible moves for the knight in this position so take a moment to understand how this uh, knight moves you know see this l like you can remember some people tend to move the knight like this they go here and they make some big l you know so that is not good so how you can understand this you leave the square where the knight stands it can move three squares right like three squares or it can move like this so it's a l however it's a l it will move only in the shape of the l so you can see the knight can jump over this bishop and it can reach there so that's how a knight moves take a moment to understand about the knights
then we move to the rooks how the rooks moves the rooks move vertically and also sideways so the rook can move like this in one move yeah, the rook can even reach the last square or even there and this rook can move something like to h1 or to g1 can move here or it can move upwards it's pretty simple right that's how the rook moves the rook is worth five points of material okay so rook is one of the major pieces and the knight worth three points the value of the knight is three points and the value of a bishop is also three so what we saw is the value of a pawn is one the knights are knights and the bishops are worth three points and the rooks are worth five points okay so the rooks are more valuable than the knights and bishops so these knights and bishops are called as the minor pieces okay yeah so the knights and the bishops are called as the minor pieces and the bishops move diagonally we saw the knight move in an l shape the bishops move diagonally a light squared bishop moves only in squares can only move in light squares can move to all these squares it cannot move here because there's a knight there so you cannot eat your own pieces by the way a <laughs> uh, lot of beginners uh, in the chess tournament they will just uh, gobble their own pieces up and uh, the opponent will be shouting arbiter illegal move uh, and uh, the arbiter comes and resolves the issue an illegal move is a move that you are not uh, allowed to do or uh, a move that is that cannot be possible to play in a position because it's not as per the rules of the game okay the light squared bishop moves in the light squares diagonally similarly a dark squared bishop moves in dark squares diagonally so this is clear right yeah so we will move to the queen the queen is the most powerful piece in the chessboard okay the queen can uh, move in all the directions it can move in all the direction it can reach any number of squares okay it combines the movement of a rook and a bishop for example a rook can move up and down and it can also move sideways so a queen could do all that and the queen can also do the job of a bishop like it can also move diagonally as you can see so these are the possible moves for the queen in this position so see how much squares the queen covered it sees the entire board right so it's it's a it's the most powerful piece it's like your commander or what you can say you can just yeah it's so powerful and if we come to the king king moves like a queen but only one squares in around itself a queen can reach any number of squares a queen can reach or a queen can even go and capture that rook and a queen can do a lot of things but the king sadly can move only one square around itself okay can move there move here move to d2 move to e1 and can move to f1 it cannot move to d1 because there's a rook can go to f2 and you cannot go to these squares as there are piece, pieces occupying those squares so i hope the piece value and how the pieces move are clear to you by now okay now i have to introduce you some special moves uh there are two special moves basically one is unpassant and the other one is castling if your opponent uh moves his pawn two step forward and stands next to your pawn side by side as you can see 
you can actually capture this pawn not like this not sideways but you can move your pawn there behind your opponent's pawn and capture your opponent's pawn it looks like a software glitch or a bug or something but no trust me it's a rule of chess only on this move only on this move when your opponent made this pawn move two steps forward you can move your pawn to that square behind your opponent's pawn and you can capture that pawn let's say if you just waste this move do something else like you uh, move your bishop or something and your opponent moves his pawn or something now you cannot do that now you cannot capture an unpersoned so this is the uh, move where you can capture the pawn and percent uh, bear with me this is not complicated please i am just going through a slow speed so i will take you through and i will navigate you safely don't worry just remember this move the next move, next special move is castling let's say my opponent did this move okay i told you that king move one step around itself but castling is a special move where king moves two squares okay the king can move two squares and the rook comes next to the king understand you see this these two squares that's where the king and the rook going to go this is a special move where you can move two pieces at the same time it looks like this now the king is castled okay and there are these three pawns in front of the king which acts like a god or a wall or the or a protection to the king okay and there there are there's a knight defending the king okay there are some exceptions if you do castling over the board you have to touch your king first then you have to move your king two steps you have to place the king there on the g1 square and then you will move your rook there okay understood yes and castling can be done only if you haven't moved your king or the rook with which you are trying to castle so if you had move, uh, moved this rook like to g1 and maybe your opponent moved something like this then you did your rook back and uh, maybe uh, the opponent moved the bishop now you cannot castle okay you are not allowed to castle and it's a illegal move so i want you to understand that castling can be done only if you don't move your king and uh, if you haven't moved your king and if you haven't moved the rook with which you are trying to castle and you cannot also castle when you are in check yes now you can ask me like sir i'm wait what is a check right yeah let's look at this position and if it's white to let's say white moves his queen to the g6 square okay and we are attacking this king so this king is under a check so in a check you have to move your king and get your king to safety so black has to uh, move his king and get it to the safety he cannot make any other moves let's say he has a pawn somewhere or a queen or some other pieces he cannot ignore the check and move those pieces he has to respond to the check he must respond to the check he can uh, block the check let's say we give a check like this this is also a check this is also a check to the king and uh, he can block the check if he has some pieces by placing it in between or he can move the uh king or or he can capture the piece which is delivering the check like in this case this is the queen uh if he has some piece, pieces unfortunately he doesn't have any pieces so he cannot uh capture the queen right now so he has to move 
So let's say he moves his king to h6. And now it's white to move. And uh, white has a move to win the game instantly. That is, moving the king, the queen here, delivering a check to the king. But it is also a checkmate because you can see like, oh, wait, this is a check. Where do I move? Where do I move this king? Oh, if I go here, the queen will capture. See, the website is not allowing me to move the king there. So I cannot move there. The queen captures. I cannot capture the queen because our king defends the queen. So you cannot capture because kings don't, uh, you cannot capture a king. And kings don't come like this. You cannot move the kings close to each other. So they just maintain a social distancing apart. You can just call it. So this is a case where the black's king is under a check and he cannot escape the check. So this is known as checkmate. So in this position, white wins the game as the black king surrenders and black loses the game. So this is a case where uh, one player wins, the other one loses. There is also something known as a stalemate. For example, in this position, if it's white to move and white just carelessly ma makes this move. This is actually a stalemate. You can ask what I don't understand. What is it? What just happened? And you can ask me. Yes. Now it's black to move. Try moving the black king. Where can you move? You cannot go there. You can go to h8. Can also cannot. You can also not go to that square because the queen just covers that those squares. You cannot come there. You also cannot go there because the kings don't go next to each other. And you can also not go there. So you don't have any legal moves. You don't have any other pieces to move. But it's your move. It's your move, but you cannot move any other pieces. But you are also not in check. So legally, you do not have any moves, but you are also not in check. This is known as stalemate. In this position, the game ended in a draw. This is a draw. White neither wins and black also not wins. But this position is draw equal. You can ask me. What? I have a queen. He doesn't have anything. Uh, you're saying this is a draw. Chess works like that. This is a rule. I didn't make this rule. Uh, it's a rule followed. So, yeah. So, that stalemate works. So, you have to be careful not to stalemate. You have to actually checkmate. Like, you can do this and you can deliver this checkmate. Check, forcing the king to the corner and you can checkmate. So, now you win. So these are the things you have to keep in mind. This is the goal of every player. So when you start a game, you want to checkmate the opponent king. Similarly, they would try to do checkmate your king also. So let's look at this position. Here you can uh, do something known as a ladder mate. Ladder mate, you can ask me. Yes, checkmates have names. For example, in this position, if you go back to this position, um, I showed you this checkmate, right? Forcing the king to the corner square and checkmating the king. This is known as the kiss of death. Yeah, uh, it sounds so romantic, but yeah, it's, it's the kiss of death. The white queen kisses the king to death. So this is, that's how it is known. And uh, yeah, jokes apart. That's the name of uh, this checkmate. And similarly, there is something known as the ladder checkmate. Let's say this is white to move. You can move this rook to the b3 square and let black play any move. Like, let's say black goes to the square. You can move this rook and check this king, okay? You check this king. Now, this king cannot come down the board, okay? Because we are cutting. We are cutting the king's uh, escape path, okay? So the king can go there. 
now you move your queen now the king cannot still cannot go this way you know because we are just cutting this we are just cutting the king's escape route so the king has to go back we just alternate we just continue we just keep going okay we just keep going and we just check with the king at the edge of the board so the king has no legal moves and this is known as ladder meet as you can see this technique you can see this how it is done yeah you can move your queen the rook the queen and the rook so this is a ladder mate so i hope you are clear with the checks and the checkmates now uh, i have to explain you about the three stages of the game that is the opening the middle game and the end game there are certain restrictions like after this many moves the opening ends then the middle game starts no there is not something like that i will first uh, go through every each of these steps one by one okay let's say it's uh, let's look about the opening at the starting of the game you should uh, get your pieces developed and get your king to safety then go for attacking your opponent or go try checkmating your opponent okay but you should not get into fight early so these are some of the ideas or the principles behind the openings okay first white has to move let's say i move this two squares forward let's say black just moves this knight i move this pawn two steps forward so i have these two pawns in the central squares as you observe d4 e4 e5 and d5 these are the central squares of the chessboard okay uh, you should have a goal to just control the center squares there is a common saying in chess like one who controls the center controls the game it's not always true but it's uh, true almost every time okay so a best way to control the center is by putting two pawns in the center yeah just moving for black just for the sake of that i want to show you some positions you put two pawns in the center so these pawns control the center squares very well as you can see then you develop your knights first you don't develop your bishops first you develop your knights knights before bishops you develop the other knight you develop your bishop you can develop it to c4 or even b5 but c4 is better you put this bishop in a long diagonal you develop the other bishop then you castle and after castling you can move your queen up you can develop your queen from its starting square then you develop your rooks okay a lot of beginner players ask why should i develop my pieces why should i not uh, go and attack my opponent immediately yeah i will come to that you have to it's chess is like a war okay both of you are having a battle you and your opponent so it's like preparing for a war you have to get all your uh, army ready before you engage in a fight okay so you have to develop all your pieces to the optimal square so that they they are more efficient and they are more powerful so that you can easily overpower your opponent so that's why you develop your squares so this position which we arrived at here is known as the golden position like you can have the knights on c3 and f3 the bishops on c4 and f4 the rooks controlling the central files the e and b files 
the king castle this is known as the golden position and it can serve as a basic goal for you to complete your opening stage of the game but the sad thing is opponent will not let you do this because they are also trying to achieve to this position so your opponent will not allow that for example let's say you play e4 and then he plays e5 sorry e5 now you cannot put your pawn in the center because your pawn will get taken you can capture it back with your queen but he can attack your queen you see this he's attacking your queen so your queen is in danger so it's not not a good idea to do that so you can have uh, the golden position as a guide or a goal to navigate across the opening stages of the game now once you complete the opening you will enter a phase known as the middle game okay now let me sh show you a position uh, but before that uh, the middle game consists of mainly two things one is the strategy the other one is the tactics the strategy is like a plan or a set of ideas that you implement to achieve a specific goal any strategy is slow um, in the sense and a strategy is used to exploit the weakness like a weak square or a weak piece etc and so on a weak king a king without enough safety etc i will come to strategies later you don't have to worry about the strategies right now as a beginner because most of the games chess games played uh up at, um, up until the beginner and even till the 1200 to 1400 level are decided over 90 percent by tactics the other one is tactics okay what is a tactic a tactic is a specific sequence of moves which may be forced in a lot of cases result in a winning of material a huge material advantage or it can eventually lead to checkmate there are different tactics and there are names for different tactics i will show you a tactic right now yes if you look at this position and if it is black to move black has a rook and a knight white has a queen a black has a five point worth material and a three point worth material so he has eight point value uh, we have a queen which is worth nine points okay so you may think okay white is slightly better uh, because uh, we have a point value of nine while the black has eight but this is black's move and black can move his knight to the square give a check and for the king and the queen this is known as a knight fork in this case the king and queen are four so it's a royal fork okay so now white is under check and white has to move the king somewhere and wherever you move the king black captures the queen and white loses the queen so this is a tactic you can see the sequence right knight moves to the e4 square delivers a check and forks the king and queen so this is a tactic known as the knight fork there are a lot of tactics i can show you another example in this case let's say it is uh, white to move white can uh, make a move and win black's queen you can say wow I thought we have a white has a queen and black also has a queen so this should probably end in a draw but not here white can uh, win the black's queen by a tactic called as the skewer the skewer is a tactic uh, where you force a high value piece to move away and you capture the 
piece which is uh, behind that piece behind the high value piece let's say now it's white to move and white delivers this check to b2 white moves the queen diagonally one square back gives a check so this king is forced to move somewhere yeah it has to move somewhere if the king moves the queen is lost i already said you when you are in check you have to move your king or you have to block the check or you have to capture the piece which is delivering the check hey you cannot do the second and third options you have to move your king so to move your king we can just capture that queen so that's how you win material through tactics so it's forced in this position you see it is very forcing so the king has to move and you have to you will you will be able to capture the queen and white wins yeah and as you see now i will show you a position in this uh, position white played the move castles black played the move h6 and white played the move d4 you know white is a cultured guy he just puts two pawn in this two pawns in the center you know okay now what did uh, black do black captured the pawn so this is a trade you know black captured a pawn as you see now what white does is white is thinking i can capture this with a knight i can also capture with the queen so i can just regain my material loss back because white is a pawn down right now but uh, which of the two options is better for white i want to i want you to think like this so you have two options which will you do let's say you can you know it's i think white is lost in this position so white is literally lost if black plays very well and accurately from this position onwards because this pawn this pawn which is present there is being defended by the black's knight so if white just uh, carelessly captures this pawn the white queen is in danger and black can just capture the queen and this is a advantage and it's a beneficial capture for the black it's not and it's a loss for white side so we cannot do it that way so what you can do is we can catch recapture back with the knight so white recaptured with the knight so both the knights see each other is the black knight attacking the white knight no it's not an attack in the case of a queen if you lose the queen it's loss for the white so it is an attack but this is not an attack they just they are just equal value both worth three points so what black did is black just captured the knight so now we have to recap uh, regain our material so we recapture with the queen queen takes d4 and now it's black to move and black made this bishop move before this move let's see i white is in a slightly better position because white has all his pieces developed you know except except this bishop this has to be developed somewhere except that white is doing good he castled he centralized his queen so see how much the queen sees you know the center of the board so we centralize the queen but the black position is so uh, so so weak because all the pieces are confined within this small rectangle and uh, black hasn't developed these two pieces yet and he hasn't castled his king to safety so black thought okay let's uh, make a bishop and he moves the bishop but i want you to think now okay my opponent made a move what does he want okay i think he just wants to develop his piece so he developed his bishop 
But as you said in the as I said in the opening, knights before bishops, right? Yeah, you have to develop your knights before you develop your bishops. But he did it in this manner. Uh, so I want you to think: Is there something for free? Did my opponent uh, left something for me to capture for free, or is he attacking any any of my piece? I don't think he's attacking this bishop. Like just sees there into thin air, so he's not at attacking anything. Okay, so the queen is pretty safe. Um, so, so you have to just think, and if you think, you can just see. Look around the board. You can see this. Yes, you can capture the pawn. This bishop used to be on that square. While it is on that square, it was defending that pawn. As your opponent or the black player made this move, you can actually capture this pawn. So white captured this pawn. So now white is up a pawn, and we are also attacking the rook. So where does the rook move? If the rook moves here, it will get taken. Yeah, so the rook cannot even go to h7 square. So what could be done in this position? Now black moves this bishop to f6, and this is known as X-ray defense. That is, we cannot capture this bishop because it is defended by the knight, and it is also defended by the queen. Okay. So if we capture with the queen, we will lose our queen. Okay, clear. But this bishop defends this rook through this queen, so we cannot capture this rook. If we do so, we lose our queen. Let's say if we capture, we lose our queen. Understand? Yeah. So this is this is X-ray defense. So our queen is now under attack. So that's the intention of our opponent's previous move. So what should I do now? I should get my queen to safety. Where do I get it? Maybe I move it one square back. But if I do it, oh, this pawn can capture diagonally. You see that pawn can capture diagonally. So it will capture the queen. So it is not safe to go there. Oh, what to do? Don't get panicked. Just look through the board. We cannot go forward or diagonally. We can come back. We can come back to g4 or g3. White got the queen back to safety to g3. So I don't want to delve deep into this position, but I want you to understand the thought process behind uh, these moves. You know, uh, so we can see we centralized the queen. Black made a careless move, and we were able to take advantage of that, and we were able to capture a pawn right there. As you see, we made a trade. We made an equal trade with the knights. Takes takes. The bishop moves. Then we captured that pawn. Okay. Then black defended his rook. Then white came back to g3, saving his queen with a material advantage of a pawn. So this is how middle games work. And once the middle game is complete, we reach a stage called as the end game. Okay. You will be like, whoa. What all the pieces vanished? <laughs> uh, yeah. So th let's say let's look at into this position. Uh, this is a end game. White has a pawn while black doesn't have anything. Just has the king. So this is known as the king and pawn end game. There are a lot of end games. There are king and pawn end games, rook end games, queen end games, queen and pawn end games, bishop endings, etc. I can just list on. So, in games have a concept, idea, and a specific technique behind. Uh, if you know those techniques, it will be easier for you to win the game effortlessly. Okay, for example, in this position, if you know the king and pawn ending, you can easily promote this pawn. Okay? This is a new term that is this pawn. If it reaches the last rank, okay, the eighth rank, you can get a queen, a rook, a knight, or a bishop. 
whichever you want so this is another special move of a pawn so we saw special moves like the unpassant the castle castling and the promotion promotion of a pawn but you can see the king is blocking the way of the pawn and even our king is standing on the way but we can move our king and facilitate but black will not allow you to do so so there is a so this king and pawn uh, in game has a specific technique like opposition you know outflanking and supporting the pawn to the promotion i can explain everything in this video but i don't want this video to get any longer or it would be a long long video so i would just show you show you uh, the winning sequence okay i will put a video separately on end games like the king and pawn end endings and i will explain everything in detail over there okay now let's say it's white white to move and move the pawn here now black has to move somewhere let's say he goes back or goes to the side we outflank then black again stands in the way we come there now we are in opposition i will explain this everything don't worry about the terms wait for the updates i will post another video soon i will explain everything in detail so black just moves i'm just making moves okay we give a check king moves back we check again the king moves we promote to a queen or a knight or a rook or a bishop if you even if we have two bishops a light square and dark square bishop you can even get another bishop so it depends on your choice we can get a queen and we can easily checkmate this king with the queen so that is also a in game technique let's get to this position let's say you have a queen black doesn't have anything has only a king now it's your move white white to play and uh, if you know the king and queen in game these are elementary checkmates that is queen checkmate uh, or king and a rook check checking checkmating the king uh, a knight and a bishop can checkmate the king which is slightly more difficult uh, for intermediate players even and there are two bishops a pair of bishops can checkmate the king there are a lot of techniques okay let's say i will teach you this uh, king and queen checkmating the king okay now it's white right to move you follow the l technique l technique that is the knight moves in a l shape so you do it to your opponent you move your queen to the square like if it is a knight then it will be a check to the black okay if it if it is a knight instead of a queen it will be a check so you put your queen in knight opposition so now the black has to move somewhere okay let's say the black goes there you just copy the black's move you also go diagonally one square forward okay let's say black goes to uh c7 let's say you you just copy that let's say black goes to b7 one square side you also do that so you are still in knight knight opposition sorry about that arrow yeah you are still in knight opposition now let's say black goes to a8 i want you to be careful over here because if you copy this and do this move you will end up in stalemate because now it's black's move but black doesn't have a legal move black cannot go there black cannot go there black cannot go to these squares and black is not even in check as you see black is safe but it's black's move so it will be a stalemate so don't do that you just cut the king off in the second rank that's you just cut the king off in the edge of the board so the king can only move between these two squares so the king will be moving here now you bring your own king 
we just keep moving back and forward so you just bring your king okay and once you bring your king close enough you can deliver the checkmate you, you have two checkmates in this position one is this the kiss of death or you can deliver this checkmate this is also a checkmate so that's how you win your end games so to summarize we saw about the chessboard the chess pieces how the pieces move uh, the piece values of different pieces and moves like n percent uh, promotion castling and uh, basic ideas of the openings middle game and the end games okay so yeah this is a lot of information for you to take in right now as a beginner so i don't want to delve in depth so i will make further videos uh, for you to learn and understand even more concepts about chess so stay tuned so the basic study plan for this what i would say if you're just starting as a beginner uh, it's better to just learn an opening because uh, learn one or at least learn two openings i would suggest for white and also for the black pieces there are different openings openings have different names then openings are named after the places the city the person who uh, made the opening famous or uh, made it more popular or developed the opening depending on it etc okay so you learn two openings for a piece for white and also for black so that you don't get checkmated easily okay the opening itself i don't want you to uh, lose the pieces or all of that for example uh there is a four move checkmate I, uh, as you can see let's say you are playing black e4 e5 you reach this position and you are attacking this queen haha ha, i am attacking the queen but this bishop and this queen are lined to this f7 pawn and this can lead to checkmate if you don't have proper uh, knowledge in, about the opening you may get checkmated very easily this is known as the scholar's mate this is a four move checkmate or scholar's mate uh, something like that so I don't want you to lose like that. The fastest possible checkmate is a two move checkmate where if white plays g g4 and black plays e5 and uh, if white plays this f3 boom queen h4 is a checkmate. White cannot move the king. King doesn't go like knight. So yeah, the king is still in check and cannot escape or cannot be blocked by any piece so this is a checkmate so there are a lot of traps and uh, checkmate traps attacks in the opening stages of the game so what i want you to do is learn two openings for white and black side and play games and practice and get used to that opening ideas i don't want you to memorize all the theory just learn the basic concepts and ideas behind the opening and learn about the end games even play uh, all of your all of your game successfully but you don't know the end game techniques or you don't have the end game ideas then it will be difficult for you to convert your winning advantage so i talked about the king and pawn end games the queen end games etc you can learn those end games you can learn how to checkmate with a queen uh, with a rook or with uh, two bishops you know they are the elementary mates you can learn that and you can also learn some uh, tactical ideas by solving puzzles in online websites like the chess.com or some other websites i prefer chess.com because uh it's more user friendly and uh, a chess.com membership will guide you through uh, the ideas behind the tactics 
and it will get used to the tactical patterns while solving puzzles just solve at least 10 puzzles every day so that your tactical vision improves and you will get used to the position okay so you will get used to the patterns and the ideas behind the tactics and you will easily spot those tactics in a real game solve 10 puzzles without any mistake i want you to solve with perfection there should not be any mistake uh, let's say you have a position you move this piece and it's not the right move so you think again then you move no i want you to think well and then move you have i want you to see the whole sequence and then move so yeah you can learn the opening middle games and end games by reading a book like for example for end games there is the 100 end games by jesus de la villa uh, which is a wonderful book um, you can start learning from the book but for a lot of beginners uh, looking through the book and reading will be so boring so you know it, a lot of players just stop learning chess stop studying chess because it's boring so if you are not used to that you can watch youtube videos you know you can subscribe to my channel and uh, just check out all the new content i'm uh, i'm going to post i'm planning to post a lot of instructive videos for beginners even for intermediate players about the openings middle games end games strategies the weaknesses pawn plays etc so you just uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, do like and share the channel to a friend who's in need to learn the chess and yeah thank you so much welcome to the chess world